Ambassador Ford, I, I uh, first of all, I thank you for your service, and I applaud your your uh, statement of what our policy is and your conveying that uh, to the opposition and what they need to do and how they think about this. H having said that, um, in, in looking what's happening on the ground over there, you, you know, your your statement uh, about it being a complex society, I think, is a is an understatement. Uh, <laughs> I, I understand. I mean, it, uh, you know, you have the Druze and the Kurds and the Sunnis and the Alawites and about a dozen other you know, even smaller groups. The, the difficulty I have is um, how, how I understand what you're telling them they need to do where everybody's welcome, everybody's going to be equal and what have you. They don't have much of a history of that. And, and our culture is, our culture is, uh, has trouble thinking along those lines because they are so segregated. I mean, they, they're not like we are where we amalgamate into one society. I mean, they are, they are very, very uh, segregated. They marry within their groups. They stay within their groups. They do socialize, do business within their groups. So saying that, well, you know, when Assad goes, and I, I believe he will go, that we're all, they're all going to get together and do this, and particularly looking at their organization right now, I, I'm pretty pessimistic about that. So I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think it's a good position to take, but from a purely pragmatic standpoint, uh, could you uh, maybe analyze your own analysis of it uh, from that standpoint? Senator Risch, it is a very fair question. It is a very fair question. Uh, it is a sad truth that not only in Syria, but in many countries in that region, there is no history of rule of law and respect for human rights. I mean, that's just the historical reality. Um, what I would say is just a couple of things on this. One of the things that I have learned from the Arab Spring, um, which is really unprecedented in my 30 years working in the region, going back to when I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Morocco in 1980, um, what we've seen in the last year is unprecedented. One of the things that I have learned is there is a new generation coming up. And this generation is very plugged into the internet and it's very plugged into satellite television. Um, they know much more about how to upload different kinds of videos than, I mean, I'd never watched YouTube until I went out as ambassador to Syria. Um, now I watch it every day. Um, don't, don't, want, don't want to know what you watch. Uh, we won't go there, Senator. Um, but <laughs> what I would say is there is no history, but the people there that are leading the protest movement they have a vision, they have a vision. Um, and I heard this very strongly when I went to Hama, and I heard this very strongly when I visited some of the restive suburbs around uh, Damascus, and when I went to Jassim. I heard this very strongly. They want a country where people are treated with dignity, everybody treated with dignity, and that's the key word, Senator, dignity. Um, and they have a vision of a country ruled by law. My own experience, having served in Iraq for four and a half years, is this is a very hard thing to do. Um, and it takes time. Um, saw the same thing in Algeria as well when I served there. Um, but there is, there is change coming, and values and norms are changing because they are more plugged into the rest of the planet than they used to be. And Syrians are actually surprisingly plugged in um, to the Mediterranean, for example. That was one of the things I learned uh, when I went out there. Yeah, that's an interesting observation. And I, uh, the question I would have is, um, does that spill over to their cultural hardwiring that they have, if you would? Uh, obviously, they were raised by parents in a, in a society that, uh, uh, that protected them from the other minorities or other sects in the country. Is that breaking down at all? Do you see that at all? Are they are they intermarrying? Uh, I guess that would be probably the, the, the most uh, telltale uh, sign of that. Um, in Damascus, there are uh, many mixed marriages, many, many, um, and in other parts of the country as well. In fact, one of the things, if we had Syrians sitting at this table instead of me, um, they would say to you, Senator, but we've always lived together peacefully, and we've never had these problems. Um, we're not like Iraq, uh, we're different. Um, I think one of the things that the 
political opposition needs to do, and we told them this repeatedly, is they need to address the fears directly um, and not simply um, fall back on the argument that Syrians historically have lived together peacefully between communities and therefore there is no problem. There is a problem. There is a problem and they need to address it. I think the younger people um, do understand that fear. In the demonstrations, every Friday that, uh, where they have the big ones, the really big ones, um, there frequently are banners, this is watching it on YouTube, um, that say, Ashaba Suri Wahed, which is Arabic meaning, the Syrian people are one. And what they are trying to express there is no sectarian divisions. Don't let the Assad regime play one community off against the other, which is very much what the regime ultimately is trying to do. There are signs all over Damascus um, that the government put up saying, uh, beware of um, sectarian strife. Well, the, the opposition is saying the people are unified against you. It's the government that's even raising the issue in the first place. Thank you, Ambassador Ford. I appreciate your optimism on, on, on the subject. I hope you're right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.